Man, this video f sucks, bro. What the hell? What's up, guys? It's your boy Yovu here, and today I'm bringing you a fresh new motion graphic tutorial. Remember, guys, to smash that like button and hit subscribe to stay updated on. <laughs> my new content. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, hi. So um, today is gonna be a quick one. I really wanted to show you guys all the ways, all the various ways that you can customize and design your own sphere or orbs or any shapes uh, in After Effects. And we're gonna be doing something like this. It basically, is a really trendy uh, gradient shape that is uh, really popular right now. Usually, you can design straight from Photoshop or Illustrator, but I'm gonna show you guys how you can achieve that or something close to that in After Effects. So I'm going to be going to the ellipse tool and I'm going to double click on that and it's going to create a shape uh, for me. Drop down the ellipse and the ellipse path tab and inside I'm going to unlink size first and make sure this is 1 uh, 1080 by 1080. Then we'll get a perfect circle like this. I'm gonna link it back again and then drop it down to a normal size, proper size. I'm gonna be breaking this video down into three tips. So the first one is to use multiple gradient inside of the shape. And then what I'm gonna do is click on the fill over here. We've got a various options. Uh, we've got a linear gradient or the radial gradient right now because as a sphere, I'm gonna head on the radial gradient. I'm gonna drag these handles out. I actually can move these handles to wherever I want and the further I move this uh, uh, the highlight circle over here it's gonna look like it's creating a, a feathery part over here which I actually like this uh, color combination right now it looks like it can be reversed for a little bit so I'm gonna uh, this looks all right uh, as an example now what you can do is uh, you can actually click on the gradient fill over here Control D and then you are actually gonna create a duplicate of that it's got the same settings, the same color. What you can actually do is jump into this gradient fill over here, edit the color, and in here you can actually, uh, on top of here, you can actually drop down the amount of opacity from this color, and then you can actually edit this color and turn it to something else, maybe like a, like a bright magenta as an example. And then you can change the handle point uh, and to make it go somewhere else for example have it come over here and maybe there's still a little bit of uh, orange on this side I'm gonna make sure I drag the stop over here uh, the opacity stop down here to make sure I, I get I scrunch up that uh, pinkish colored end now we got a we got a bit of pink on this side I'm gonna put it down here and then what, can, what you can actually do with this gradient is you can uh, open up the gradient fill uh, from normal you can uh, change the blending mode to maybe color dodge something interesting um, I usually go with ooh linear linear actually looks good linear like looks uh, looks pretty decent let's add another one uh, gradient fill click on gradient fill one here control D and let's make this one actually a little bit brighter than the the other ones how about a bright uh, blue Ooh, I like that and I'm gonna drag this uh, and put it on top to make sure this is visible um, um, the thing the th problem is the two handle points of great and fill one and great fill three is at the exact same place so you know it's kind of hard to grab onto just one so I I'll suggest uh, changing the position of the actual handle over here down here in this tab first and, and then you can drag it to somewhere else I'll drag it and over here to actually simulate a little bit of the edge a little bit and then I'm gonna drag I'm gonna drag the top down here once more and there we go I'm gonna change this from linear light to maybe an overlay I'm gonna go with vivid light because it's, uh, it's uh, actually blending in a little bit of the orange as well in the back. And then you can uh, jump into the gradient fill over here. This part is still uh, uh, slightly transparent over here. But what I can actually do is add in a color stop, another color stop at this end, and just slightly pick a lighter 
a lighter hue of uh, of some sort of color we get the advantage now of the blending mode actually blending in the color so let's just try and see if we can come up with a color that's gonna uh, blend in well with the other ones I think um, I think maybe green or a slight blue that, that looks good okay. what okay I'm gonna let it come through just just slight very slightly basically that's internally inside of a shape that's what you can do so tip number two is probably my favorite one are the layer styles and here's another thing that I would really like to introduce um, I'm gonna right click on this uh, shape over here go into the layer style and now if you're if you're familiar with Photoshop, you're gonna be familiar with all the options in here. Uh, I'm gonna put in possibly maybe an uh, inner shadow. I'm gonna do in the inner shadow over here, I'm gonna rotate the inner shadow a little bit, bring up the size of the shadow, change it from multiply maybe to color dodge or maybe an overlay. Overlay is looking good. I'm gonna draw out the distance even more. And look look how nice it is actually blending with the purple on the back. That's so good. And then maybe bring up the size even more. And you know, actually put in a little bit of inner glow as well. One thing about the inner glow is that the stock setting that it is having right now is actually pretty good. I think I'm gonna just put this inner glow into the lighter color option drop down the opacity a little bit and bring up the size to make sure it's not actually interfering with uh, the shadowy part other thing you can add to it is probably bevel and emboss that's like the icing on the cake is uh, bevel and emboss work exactly how it, it would uh, in photoshop basically it gives us an illusion of a beveled shape uh, hence the shadow and highlight and you can actually adjust the settings of these shadows and highlights as you would with the other settings. It actually fits pretty well with where our planned highlight and shadowy part is. I'm actually afraid the more that I'm trying to, I'm trying to pile up stuff in, the more I'm just gonna be hiding uh, our uh, details. But uh, right now in the shadowy part, I'm just gonna try and make sure, make sure the color sticks out a little bit more is actually either blocking off the inner glow that we already had or it's taking that inner glow and putting it into good use that's actually looking good maybe a blue hue a bluer hue some banding going on some weird banding is going on okay let's try i'm gonna try my best to avoid that that's good and tip number three is basically just taking advantage of adding more shapes and using the track mats and effects inside of After Effects. Other things you can do with the uh, track mat situation over here, you can actually add in a new shape and then draw in uh, maybe a highlight, a highlight of the shape like that. So we get uh, an actual highlight that uh, takes the takes the form of an actual shape. And what you can do is you can actually uh, color it uh, white and then you know put it into classic color dodge. Now nothing's gonna happen now because there's no variety in the opaqueness of the color, but that's gonna change. I'm gonna add in a fast box blur like this. And they're gonna blur it up oh my god blending with the color behind it already that looks so good oh my god pick with the track mat in here and drag it to the first shape that we had so we should it uh, sticks inside of the shape i'm gonna change up the shape uh, that we have a little bit like this maybe we can drag down the blur to maybe 11 or 9 so we still get the shape of the highlight that's still really prevalent and you know, we don't lose the details around thanks to the color dodge. And yeah, more stuff we can add, maybe a scatter. Let's try it, let's try scatter. Oh my god! Right, when you when you bring in the scatter and put it on top of the fast box blur, what it's gonna do is gonna turn the soft shape of the ball in here into a, of, into a sort of a grainy texture. Looks really nice. We really really enjoy what's going on over here. 
I just want to touch on more on this uh, rim light situation. So, um, for example, you have like a, a shape with a sharp edge or a square like this. I got over here a layer containing the, only the stroke and a layer containing only the fill. So what I can actually do is drop it down like this. Or what we're going to do first is the usual tapering of the stroke like we did last time. I'm going to draw in the start length and the end length. And then I'm going to add in a trim path like that and I'm gonna drop the ending down the stroke is also gonna be dropped down to, uh, to cover a part of the edge of the square so right now what you can actually do is having the rim light taking up only a section of the square itself drop down the stroke to maybe four and boom now you have a pre rim light and you can add in a glow to stress on the fact that the square has a white rim light Pretty good but yeah that was a sort of like a demonstration of how you can uh, use after effects to create a a really diverse gradient ball inside of after effects and i uh, hope you guys enjoy this and i'll catch you in the next one bye bye